Good morning, this is Dr. Rutledge, and I'm gonna be talking to you this morning, answering a question from one of our patients about creatine. And uh, we're gonna talk about creatine for a couple of reasons. One is that there's pretty good research that creatine, which is a part of the energy system of all of our cells in the body. So when we say energy system, what we mean is that your body does stuff. Your body does things and it requires energy to do things. But when we say do things, we mean everything. So when we think, we eat, we walk, when we smile, when we're happy or sad, all of these activities are energy dependent. Cells in our body, life itself requires energy. And without that, that's death. So energy is critically important to us. And creatine is part of the chemical system that runs our body. It's like the gasoline that runs the engine in your car. Creatine is not the only chemical that's involved in this system, but creatine is a very important one about a particular part of the body system. And so interestingly, it's also available as a supplement that you can take over the counter. So like you could take a protein drink, or you can get amino acids, or you could get uh, different kinds of supplements. Creatine is interesting because it's uh, derived naturally from body uh, foodstuffs, and you can buy some and you could take it. And the research over the past 20 years shows there might be some advantage in that, uh, especially thinking of patients who've undergone bariatric surgery. Now, let's talk about that for a second. Patients who undergo bariatric surgery commonly fail to lose enough weight. That is, they eat plenty, they are still heavy, they're still overweight, and the lap band, the sleeve, the roux and y are all well-known operations because of their failure to lose enough weight. Um, the more powerful operations, particularly the mini gastric bypass and the malabsorption procedures like the biliopancreatic diversion, duodenal switch, and things like that are so powerful that sometimes you have the risk of losing too much weight. And when that happens, there is an issue of what to do. Um, there are really two options. You can try and improve the nutrition, that is intake more, or you can revise the surgery. And the MGB is easy to revise, but a lot of our patients who get a little too much weight loss are very vigorously opposed to having a revision. Um, <laughs> we've had people say, I will not going to have a revision under any circumstances. I'm not going back to who I was. But uh, what we say is that, uh, first of all, revision surgically is easy. We don't want to do it for our patients. But one of the things that's possible is you could improve the quality of nutrition. And that might be good for everyone. So even the failed band and sleeve and ruin Y could be benefited if they ate foods that were healthier for them. And so one of the things to consider is supplements and so there's an area of supplementation where weightlifters and athletes look at supplements. And a lot of supplements are pretty much worthless. Um, and creatine is not magic, but the research on creatinine, sorry, and creatine is pretty good. And you'll see an attachment to this video, a bunch of the recent references on how valuable creatine is. And creatine is not just useful to build muscle in athletes, but now there's a fairly large body of research on how creatine can build muscle even in the elderly. And we think that that model system, that example of ability to build muscle mass in the elderly is in some ways applicable to patients who have undergone bariatric surgery. So we mention it for you to discuss with your doctor and certainly we think it's a reasonable thing to do in concert with your doctor in patients who've had the MGB, and particularly if you've had a malabsorptive procedure like the biliopancreatic diversion or the SADI or something, you know, which has a dangerously long bypass, we think it's very reasonable to look at that. Let me just summarize the research, and the research is pretty clear. Um, basically, if you give people exercise, they do better. That is, they're healthier they gain more muscle mass, they think better, they're happier. Uh, there's a variety of effects of exercise. 
So the first thing I say before we start worrying about supplements is get up. Uh, along with exercise, another associated effect that improves many, if not all, of the things about being a human being is sun. We were not born or expected to live in caves, I don't think. And so sun improves a variety of factors, including low vitamin D, which is common in our patients and, in fact, common around the world, since it appears we spend so much time inside of structures like our houses and work. So before you start thinking about creatine, remember the first steps are critical changes in lifestyle. So get up and walk, do exercise. Uh, you can use rubber bands and move your arms and stretch with those resistance bands even when you're stuck in a seat, even if you can't walk. Uh, but it's ideal to get outside, ideally to walk, but get outside under any reason. Uh, to get a minimum of 20 to 30 minutes of direct sunlight if possible every day. And if you can't get that much, uh, try and get as much as you can because otherwise there's a warning of low vitamin D. And the research is pretty clear. Low vitamin D is associated with increased risk of heart attack, stroke, death, cancer, and other bad outcomes. Sun and exercise are good. Now having said that, it may be that sun and exercise plus a little creatine is not bad. Uh, of course, you need a healthy diet, and I've got other videos on what we recommend for a healthy diet. But adding some supplemental creatine, which is, you know, a spoonful or two of creatine, and uh, I wouldn't get too wound up over the exact amount because we don't know for sure, but uh, creatine doesn't have the greatest taste. It's kind of gritty. Uh, it's kind of sandy uh, tasting. It's hard to di dilute, but uh, especially if you mix it in some kind of smoothie, you can kind of cover up the, the grittiness a little bit. But we recommend it uh, daily, and uh, the research suggests that it will improve muscle mass, uh, maybe help protect you from ending up getting malnutrition after your bariatric surgery. It may also improve cognition, and that's the ability of the brain cells to think. It may help protect the brain against damage, like a stroke. So in mice who got creatine, they had less of a stroke and less stroke damage than the little mice who didn't get creatine. I'm sorry about the little mice in that study. Um, similarly, creatine has been shown in animals to protect against heart damage when there's a heart attack. Uh, it's been shown to improve bone and uh, fight osteoporosis. So for a variety of reasons, we think adding a little creatine is good. It's not a substitute for a good, healthy lifestyle. The first things to think about, in our opinion, is pretty simple and that's a healthy diet, and we talk about that elsewhere where we go into detail. Number two is uh, get outdoors. Go out in the sun. Even if it's a winter day, even if it's cloudy, get out and uncover as much of your body as uh, uh, reasonable. And if you can't uncover it completely because of uh, other good reasons, then uh, get uncovered as much as possible so that still many of the rays of the sun will penetrate thin material, so you might still get the benefit of vitamin D from the UV radiation, but get outdoors. And then exercise. We're not designed to be sitting in front of the TV set, eating bad food and being indoors. So those things first. And then in addition, discuss with your doctor the addition of creatine. And we like a teaspoon, a tablespoon mixed in a glass of water or juice or something like that and uh, that can be one or two times a day and um, it's important to discuss this with your doctor before you start that but we think it's very valuable and the research is uh, mildly positive but generally positive in a variety of areas and it makes perfect sense that that substitute might work and as I say a numerous animal and human studies suggest it might work and the safety studies are very impressive that when used in moderation, it seems to be extremely safe uh, in addition. So that's a quick answer to the creatine issue. And I hope that's a little bit helpful. Thanks very much.